Hello, my dear friends. Welcome back to Heart Breathings for another notebook challenge video. These are some of my favorite videos to make. It's like my comfort video at this point. So let me know in the comments if you feel the same way. And if you are new here, welcome to this wonderful land where my entire table is just covered in notebooks. And we are going to talk about the ways that I am currently using my notebooks to support my life, to support my plans. And then we're going to give away a notebook. We're going to talk about a diverse read for the month. And I'm definitely going to encourage you to go into your closet or that special drawer or that bookshelf where you've been hoarding all your prettiest notebooks that you're scared to write in, that you're afraid you're going to mess up and just start using them because we love notebooks and they can help us so much in getting our ideas down and organizing our thoughts and organizing our lives. So let's use them. And okay, let's get started. <laughs> So welcome back. I have just gotten back from the future of publishing mastermind in New Orleans, where they actually gave us a notebook. I'll be sharing that with you here. And in fact, Russell and Monica, who are the founders of the future of publishing mastermind, they run writer MBA. I will link to some of their stuff down below. They said they were thinking of me when they picked out the notebook and the pens and stuff. So <laughs> super fun. So I will be sharing a full vlog of my time, but I have also been trying to get myself back into the groove of life since coming back. I'm going to show you how I took notes at the conference and I'm going to just kind of share all my things. I also just went and got my mail and I had some beautiful things in there. So I thought, okay, I'm going to share what I got in the mail. So for the first of it, I signed up for planner presses dash box. So they always have had, and I've talked about it and followed it for years. They have a digital dash box where you can like print your own dashboards and things like that in various sizes. And I have previously loved it, thought about giving it up, stayed subscribed, and I'm glad I stayed subscribed. They've kind of changed their artwork a little bit more so you can kind of see. And I have really been liking the last few dash boxes, but then they also this year started a physical dash box, but I did see there's an email. Maybe they're having some problems with the printer or something like that. So they might be discontinuing it. I'm not sure, but either way, look how gorgeous this is. So they have these pretty like girls in boats and this one's like cottage core or something like that. Look at the cute flowers and mushrooms, the girl in the river, or the brook or whatever, little daisy chains. So there's lots of really cute things here, a little bunny eating a strawberry. <laughs> and also, um, I don't see, I don't remember if I chose the brown hair. I think I must have, uh, because if you actually get their digital dash box, you can choose like skin tone and some other things. So they must send you, I can't remember. They must send you those things based on it. So here you can see more diversity in skin and hair color tones in this one. So super cute. So it comes with this basically like Erin Condren boxes and then like a journaling kit and then these smaller boxes that uh, work perfectly for other types of planners or journaling kits and things like that. So that is really beautiful. Then we also have Nikki plus three, who many of you may know is part of our Hardy's community here. I just love her. If you haven't ever checked out her sticker kits, they're some of the most beautiful ones I've ever seen. And she does this gorgeous foiling. And she said that she was inspired by my word of the year, cherry on top, and created this amazing cherry on top sticker kit. Like I had to grab it. Look how gorgeous this is with the golden cherries and everything. I love it. Excuse the pen marks on my hand. <laughs> Don't let that detract from the gorgeousness of this. So beautiful. And it comes with like, if you get the full set of stickers with the add on, it comes with so many stickers. You could really use it for multiple weeks and also in your journaling and other things like that. And then she does have a lot of add ons like florals and floral borders that you can pull off. There's, uh, let me see if I can pull these up. These, you get a choice between matte or this uh, sort of clear transparent. And I like them both, but when I'm putting these in my nighttime journal, I do prefer the transparent ones, but for my like Erin Condren memory planner and stuff, I like the matte. So either way, it's beautiful. Look at how pretty this is and the cherries I just, Love it. So here's part of the journaling kit. 
some of the washi tapes and some extras here. So this is basically the entire, I think, journaling kit as well as the entire Erin Condren kit. So beautiful. So much love for her shop. I have so many sticker kits. And you know what? I found similar to my notebooks that I have gotten into this habit in the past of I'm scared to use them because I don't want to like waste it or I don't want to use it if it's something that feels precious. I've started feeling that way about some of these sticker kits, like the most beautiful ones or the more expensive ones or the ones that have the most foiling. It's like, I love them so much. I'm scared to actually use them because I just want to always know they're there. It's kind of a weird thing, but I, find that when I actually put them down on the paper, they bring me so much joy to like look back through them, to look through my planner. And I'll show you kind of what I mean when I'm going through some of my notebook stuff. Cause you don't have to just use even this kind of sticker kit that is made for like certain kinds of boxes or Erin Condren planners, or you could use this in a happy planner too. You don't just have to use that in a certain kind of planner. You can use it in your notebooks too. And when you're using this kind of sheet in a notebook, it's not just like a weekly spread. You could use this for your entire month. So it kind of makes it more uh, like last longer, especially when she has so many different kinds of box in her formatting. Look how cute this is. All this beautiful foiling. I love the colors of her kits. They're always so pretty. Then we have, look at this dragonfly. I just noticed that Nikki has all my favorite things. <laughs> and then she also has these coffee journaling sets. And I love these. There's also bookshop ones that she has. I think they're still in her store. And it's just so fun to put on your notes pages. I just love it. So here's some more coffee ones, coffee, little coffee spills, like coffee rings. Like you set your coffee down on your page. I love and these little coffee house ones, little postage stamps. And I love this one too, a uh, little writing desk and some mailings. So thank you, Nikki. She did send a few extra sheets with my order. And I really, really appreciate that. Also, if you didn't see one of my favorite new sticker things is from Studio Adorkable. Lacey at Studio Adorkable actually had sent me some stickers a few years back, like when Evie was just a year old that had, they were stickers of me and Evie, like Sarah writes her next bestseller and different things like that. And I still haven't even used all of those for that same reason <laughs> that I was just talking about that. It's like, once you have something precious, you don't want to waste it. But at the same time, if you never use it, like how devastating would it be to have all these gorgeous sticker kits and you never use them and then something happens like some kind of rain or a spill or God forbid a house fire, which I have been through two total lost house fires in my life. And it's devastating to think of all the things that you were like saving that you never really used. Use your things, use your things. <laughs> I'm saying that to myself as much to, as to you. But anyway, look how cute this is. Kanban board. This is my exact planner with the red rings. Like how cute is this? A little kitty, the roses, like the post-it notes, the little Hello Kitty, um, whatever you call that paper clip. Here's me doing my Friday live streams with all the little hearts coming up. Like I am obsessed with this, which by the way, if you're not familiar with my work with Kanban boards, HB90 bootcamp, is open for enrollment right now and we will start class on March 17th. So you have until then to sign up for this next round, but I am so ready to plan Q2 and I'm going to talk today a little bit about why I'm so excited for it. But how cute are these? Look, it's me. Like I wear this outfit. <laughs> it's just so cute that she made it so personalized with the little Starbucks there. It's just the cutest and some hand uh, drawn lettering there. Then there are some things that she does have in her shop, the colorful um, Kanban board and the planner stuff. These you can actually purchase. Uh, you can't buy the ones that are of me, but I, I had some people in my Friday coffee chat that I do over on my Sarah Cannon YouTube channel, which you guys are always welcome to come join us over there, by the way. I have almost 11,000 subscribers, so it would be very cool to get to 11K. I go live over at youtube.com slash Sarah Cannon every Friday. 4 p.m. Eastern. We do an hour long coffee chat. So if you just want to hang out with us a little bit more, come hang out over there. Here's a little cherry on top. But some of the people there were like, I want to be able to buy the one with the live stream so I can put it in my planner that Sarah's going live. So maybe I can convince her to put those up for sale as well. Little laptop, 
more smaller live streams, smaller laptops, smaller live streams, even more smaller, like so cute. I'm so grateful for all the stickers in my life, <laughs> which I know sounds so funny, but beautiful things make me happy. And you know, yes, I love buying new things. I love receiving new things and receiving gifts, but there's also so many of us, like if you're not in a place right now where you can buy a lot of new things, you can honestly take even just an old notebook that you didn't quite finish using and you can totally repurpose that. All you have to do is just get some fun markers or even pull some markers or old stickers out of your drawer, find some older washi tape or buy just one thing of washi tape, which you can get for maybe a dollar or two and just totally transform and utilize that notebook in a way that makes it really fun. So end of rant, use your things, use your notebooks. This also came with that digital dash box. These little, sometimes there's like little extras in there. So it had this little thing to hold your notes, which I feel like I need like a prettier notepad, but that is really cute. So anyway, we have been sitting here for 10 minutes and I have not even talked about a single notebook. So we're going to get going, <laughs> but I do have, I just wanted to show you. So this, obviously we talk about notebooks, but we also talk about planners here in the notebook challenge. And all of my planners are basically also notebooks because they'll always have note pages and things like that in it. And I just recently have printed out my March pages for HB90. And I wanted to show you kind of how I'm sometimes using some of these sticker kits in the HB90 planner. So the HB90 planner stands for Heart Breathing's 90 Day Planner. And it's a system that I developed kind of when I was in a point of complete depression and burnout. And I just knew that I was capable of more in my life and I just couldn't get over the overwhelm. I couldn't move myself forward. And so I developed this system of using a Kanban board and a certain way of doing to-do lists to sort of motivate myself, but kind of limit what was in my brain <laughs> so that I could actually get motivated and move forward and feel like I was making progress. So that's what HP 90 is all about. And I've been using it in an A5 planner for a long, long time, like years and years. And this year I switched to this happy planner size and I really am loving it. I'm going to do a plan with me coming up soon because several of you have asked for it, but I have been loving the fact too, that I have, like I said, all these sticker kits that I love that I've been kind of, I won't say hoarding, but maybe hoarding <laughs> because I didn't know like I don't know. I just, you know, you know why you get it. Uh, and so I'm just using them. So this was the dash box, the planner press dash box from last month. And it's just so gorgeous. And you can just put these little touches and really I could have taken these and only put a few here and stretch this out over multiple weeks if I wanted to get more out of the sticker kit, but I love it. So I'll probably use this one in a few coming weeks for St. Patrick's Day because it's got all the green in it. But I just kind of wanted to share with you how I'm using that. Oh my gosh. Also, I didn't show you guys this yet, but this is part of the type A for Alexa, like interactive dashboards. How cute is this? You can get this in lots of different sizes. I just can't decide what I want to put here. It's like you can lift it up and then I might put my like morning routine or my favorite like affirmations or something on here. I'm not sure, but I do love it. It's really pretty. And then you can use stickers throughout your planner to make them prettier. I don't know. So much joy, so much joy, but let's talk about notebooks now that we're good ways through this. Okay. I have so many notebooks to share. We'll see if I get through them all. So one of them is again, a notebook planner hybrid. So this is an Erin Condren monthly planner that has been pulled apart. The, the coil, I just take a set of like pliers and pull the coil out, uncoil everything and then put it back together. So this one is quite chunky and it gets more and more chunky every day <laughs> and it only has six months in it. So it has monthly spreads, which I have decorated with stickers from sticker guru. And then I also have a few other things like the dashboard, some productivity pages, some checklist pages, a lot of notes pages. So it becomes a notebook. And then also I do have in the back, a lot of extra notes pages back there, along with stickers. I have some dividers in here, just lots of fun, fun stuff. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> some of these things make me, make me smile. So this I have been using as my main monthly sort of planner for my author career. 
And then I also plan to use this for my Ream subscription coming up. And I have so many plans like flowing through my head, especially after this conference and taking the six figure subscription author accelerator course. It's like the more I learn, the more I want to be able to do. But of course, there's a challenge there, right? Because we don't necessarily have more time just because we have more on our to-do list. And even though we wish we had more time to get it all done, time doesn't magically appear. And I feel like one of the things that actually takes my joy away more than anything these days is thinking about all the things I want to do that I won't ever have time to do. And so I have to kind of pull myself back from that and say, how can I make this fun? How can I focus on the things that are going to have the biggest impact? And so my notebooks help me do that as well as my, you know, HB90 system. So I've been putting together my thoughts. <laughs> so here's one of those little like bookstore, bookshop ones. Like how cute is this? So cute. I love it. That's from Nikki plus three. And I use, you know, I use these for meetings. I use these. There's another one here. I use these for uh, co like conference calls or I don't know, Zoom calls with friends. And I also used it for this conference that I just went to. And I actually remembered after I got on the plane that I had just created another Franken planner that's basically two Erin Condren notebooks. There's no monthly pages in this one. I created this last month so that I could keep track of notes from like courses and other things. I should have taken this to New Orleans instead of this, because this now I have used up so many of my pages that I'm like, oh my gosh, is this going to last me six months or I'm going to have to take it apart? But either way, we heard um, people talking about Shopify, uh, Facebook ads, direct sales, so much information coming out. And I took some of those journaling sticker kits and just sprinkled them throughout. And it just, for me, it makes my notes just feel so much more like fun for me. Anything, any place in my life where I can find fun and joy, I'm leaning into that because there's enough stress in the world. There's enough, enough polarizing toxicity in the world. I'm trying to really lean into joy and to use things like all of the sticker kits that I used for this are things that I've had for a long time, other than this brand new sticker that came from Lacey. So anyway, I've got... March is ready to go. So I've got my month planned out here and I'm going to start making notes here about my actual subscription. But I did end up moving towards the back of this just to show you my notes. State of the industry on retailers, little book stickers and other things. It just makes me happy. I feel like the only thing that would have made this cuter is adding some highlights to important parts. So I might go back through and actually add some more little highlights and underlines to the things that I really like. Here's one of the older stickers that Lacey had made of me writing in my notebook. <laughs> I carry them with me everywhere. Um, but I ended up taking a lot of notes, but I only have this many pages left. Oh, there's more notes back here. So I feel like I might have to pull this apart again before we get to the end of the six months, but we shall see. I have also been making use of a lot of these elastic bands from Erin Condren because all of my notebooks and planners from there have kind of <laughs> reached capacity. But anyway, so I have been loving my notebooks and actually, you know, I always have loved taking notes throughout school and I'm a high learner. It's just really fun for me to learn. So I think that's one of the reasons I love notebooks too, because it kind of feels like studying and the cuter I can make my notes, the more fun my studying is. So I just wanted to share, this is my meetings notebook. And so I added a few more meetings to this. And I think, you know, this is probably going to last me maybe a couple of years. This is just an Erin Condren meetings notebook. Then just to share with you, I had shared already these three notebooks and this super cool little caddy, this acrylic desk organizer that they just released in their store. But I, you guys know, I had to actually go and buy the full set. So this is all the colors of those notebooks, um, the four A5 notebooks with the colorful coils. I really, really love them. And in fact, I think I like these two colors even better. I think this is ocean and this one's like sunrise or something. So cute. Love them. So you can get these at Erin Condren and they're pretty affordable. This actually would probably make a better notebook to take to a conference just because it's 
smaller and I could have written all my notes in here instead of taking up my other other notebook but in hindsight so since we're on an Erin Condren kick and I'm obviously obsessed sorry for the lighting but I did go ahead and pick up this home and soar organizational planner and I had this brief dream of like wouldn't it be so cool since they are doing some collabs like this how cool would it be if it was like Erin Condren and HB90 and someday they printed my planner <laughs> I would die uh, I hate that this is all orange like I really wish it was a different color than orange but we're here for it it's gonna be okay but this is basically a decluttering get your house in order kind of notebook planner and it does have monthly plans as well that you can date as you want and then it just has some good information in here about deep cleaning your house decluttering your house organizing your house so this was kind of an interesting new item from Erin Condren with the ladies from home and sort so that's kind of cool capsule wardrobe stuff I haven't actually had time to dive into it but it does look pretty neat so I wanted to share that and then I also when I got those other new notebooks the colorful ones I also made another yet another Franken planner and this is for another specific purpose and this is something I share with you guys all the time that honestly I know there are people that don't necessarily like to use so many different notebooks and that's fine we're all different and we're all you know allowed to embrace who we truly are I personally love using lots of different notebooks because it becomes a, a focus point for me that I can pick up this notebook and say, okay, right now I'm going to put everything I have about this one topic in here. But I know that some of you like to have one notebook and then you section it out to different topics or you have one notebook and then you do an index. And I love that we can share our ideas about all the different ways we're doing things. This is another Franken planner. So it is a regular A5 notebook from Erin Condren and it is also a horizontal notebook or horizontal planner and it's also mixed with their like wellness fitness uh, coiled planner I can't remember the name of it but I'll put it down below and I'm using this for my six months for life so six months for life for me is just my own personal goal to in six months at a time it's really three months for hb90 but i it spans two hb90 sessions every year that i will i'm trying to work on my health my fitness my energy levels managing my pcos and other things like that and the first two months i was really trying to establish better morning routines and getting up and writing every day and that kind of thing then this part of my goal kind of kicked in march 1st which is more of really working on eating better and more meditation more self-care and things like that and if i don't do that intentionally it just doesn't happen i'm too busy so for me that's how i separate my hb90 goals i have one goal for my writing one goal for this youtube channel and my courses and planner and stuff like that and then my third goal is very intentionally about my health and my mental health and wellness and that kind of thing my home it's more of a personal goal every time because i found that if i only focus on work stuff i can easily become a workaholic and so this third goal becomes about my personal life my family my relationships and all those things that i love so one of the things i'm doing is going back on to bright line eating so i am going to talk just for a minute about food stuff not going into too much detail but just like my own health stuff so if this is a triggering topic for you i will put a timestamp and another chapter on here that you can fast forward ahead to that so one of the ways when i was the most healthiest on my pcos journey so i was diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome when I was in college that was like all the way back in like 1996 um, and I struggled for a long time to really get it in order and had took a lot of bad advice from doctors who just didn't really understand and when I was the healthiest and felt the best and had the most energy in my PCOS journey was when I was on bright line eating so I have been wanting to get my my like get rid of my brain fog get rid of the pain get rid of the inflammation and the other flare-ups that I have and so I'm going back to this um, way of eating and so this was a collage that I made in Canva I just looked up a5 size and then typed in collage and just threw in some pictures of a time when I was like eating more um, to support my PCOS and when I had more energy so I put that in here with some coil clip connectors and then I combined this like wildflowers horizontal planner with their like health and wellness planner and then i also went through 
and printed out some things from my life plans on Etsy. And I just have started filling out some of their um, wellness goal stuff. I didn't get all the way through it from the Erin Condren planner. And there's wellness goals that you can put in here and things like that. And then I took it all apart and added in notebook pages. So I have a bunch of notebook pages where I'm putting in recipes and things like this. And this is part of the cool thing is if you have even just a plain notebook and a printer, you can always take a plain notebook and then paste on. I used a, like a glue that is repositionable and doesn't wrinkle so that it wouldn't be too thick. Plus I also used a really thin paper. So you can see some of the lines underneath it, but the thin paper is important. So it doesn't bulk up the planner any more than it already is, but you can kind of turn a notebook into whatever you want it to be without having to draw things out by pasting things in. So I have a bunch of um, notes pages here where I'm going to write how I'm feeling on this journey. And then here I'm going to be tracking on the monthly what my weight is. And again, I know weight loss is a triggering topic for some people, but it's just really important for me personally in my health, um, less about like what I look like and more about just needing that energy the older I get. So anyway, that's why I said you can skip this if it's not your thing. Um, but I do want to be able to kind of share how I'm feeling. So I'm going to keep track in this horizontal area of how I'm actually feeling, how the day is going, and then I put behind this the wellness planner where I'm going to be tracking exactly what food I'm eating and what movement I have, what my self-care is, what my water intake is. Only 36 ounces yesterday That's why I have my big water here because I need to be drinking a lot more water than that. Um, I did have like tea and coffee, but that doesn't count for me as water. I'm trying to like drink just, just water as well. So I'm going to have that daily page here and then it will go back to some of those other things. And I do have a sleep tracker and an energy level tracker that I need to get into the habit of tracking. And then I have more notes pages in the back. So this is another notebook planner hybrid for me. Um, and I just find that I take so much, it's so much fun for me to pull planners apart for some reason and make them my own. So that is kind of my like Erin Condren collection <laughs> these days. Okay, I don't know what we're going to get through all my notebooks, but I did want to kind of give you an update. So I set up this story journal last month and I put one of those stickers from, uh, from Studio Adorkable on there and you guys saw me set all this stuff up and I have been keeping track. So I've got my story days. I had almost every single day in the month of February, I read a book, listened to an audiobook or a podcast, I played a game or I watched something, but just some way that I'm consuming or participating in story every day, except for the ninth and 10th, missed a couple of days there. I also uh, had this page. So I'm been, I'm tracking the books that I read as well as I had this page where I had written like a quote and I didn't like it. So I found some printables on Etsy. I uh, can't remember the name. Let's see. It's over here. Um, calico artfuls etsy.com that I could print in a five just on sticker paper. And then I just put it over the top and there's still some of the old stuff peeking through around the flowers, but you can also still see it on the back, but otherwise kind of covered that up. The only craft book I've read so far is save the cat writes a novel, but it was very good. Some of these things I haven't fully done. I did track that. I played three of the games that I wanted to play this year already, but I was meaning to track my Twitch streams over here and haven't, haven't done that yet. The monthly spreads I'm tracking every type of story that I consume in the month. But what I wanted to do over here on the story tracker was also mark in like any time if I read three chapters, put three of the blue in here so that I could kind of track over here. And it just has been too hard to keep up with. So I did, however, write down everything that I like watched and read and, and took part in and how many words I wrote. Cause I want to see if the more I consume, the more I'm writing as well. So I set it up the same way for March, but if I don't actually end up using this because it's just too many things to keep track of, I'm, I've never been great with habit trackers. I always want to use them and then I'm never good at it. Uh, then I won't set that up for the next month, but um, I have more things in here. So just like tracking episodes of fairy tale, which we're getting close to halfway through, but not quite. And then tracking books that I've read. And so far I haven't put my thoughts in here. I've just been putting the covers and the synopsis of the book, uh, but I will go in and journal that stuff as I go. So I'm only putting the fiction books in here, not the nonfiction on that particular list, but 
I am using it every day. I just haven't been able to keep up with that habit tracker. So the other notebooks that I'm using on a pretty, pretty well daily basis, this one I'm using on a daily basis. So this is my B6 Stalogy where I keep all of my story notes for the book that I'm currently writing. Uh, that just never ends. I keep thinking I'm so close to the end and then I hit another problem and I can't quite get it. George has now read the first half of the novel, completely like final edited first half of the book, which is about 40,000, 45,000 words and he loved it. So I think we're in a good spot. I just have to clean up the ending and I don't know how long it's going to take, but I'm hoping it will be done by the time I'm meeting with you guys for our notebook challenge in April and I'll be setting up my new story in a new B6 Stalogy. And when I first decided to use the Stalogy for my plotting notes and brainstorming, I thought, oh, I'll probably get halfway through it and then we'll need to start a new book in the same notebook. But that has not been the case. <laughs> I have actually been using this, let's see, to the point where I only have this many pages left out of the whole 365 pages. So I have used it a lot and I do love being able to take these digital dash pages and some of them I just slide in because I haven't just taken the tape and tipped them in. Uh, but this is like one from last month and she sends them like you could print it yourself from the digital dash box, but she sends them on this beautiful vellum that is so nice. And I don't want spoilers, so I don't want to show you the individual pages, but I, this has been my like companion every single day um, for a long while. And I really do, I really do love using it. So it'll be fun, hopefully, to finish up this book and hopefully next in April, share with you the setup of a brand new one. Then I also have the Paquetto Project Planner that you know I was using for Project Phoenix. No, uh, February has been a very busy month and I had set up some goals for myself and some of them I did get done and some of them did not quite get done. So I need to go through, even though it's already March, it's already March a bit, a bit into March, I need to go through and set my goals for the month before the month gets away from me, um, just specifically for this. So with HB90, I already have all my goals set, but sometimes I like to have a separate notebook or planner that's specifically for one individual project when it's a big project. So Project Phoenix for me is something that will take the entire year to complete. And so it's spanning multiple quarters. So I have my 90 day plan, but then I'm gonna be starting to make a new plan for what I'm accomplishing in April, May, and June as we start planning Q2. So I think it might be interesting and some of you might be interested. So let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a more specific video here on YouTube, how I handle, uh, projects that span multiple 90 days in terms of my HB90 plan versus the long-term plan. So this year I kind of gave you guys a glimpse of it more than ever because I have that year path forward class, but I haven't shared as much of it here on YouTube. So if you're interested in seeing a little bit more of how I kind of manage those longer term projects when I do mostly 90 day plannings, let me know. So this is the weekly spread. Um, I decided to write down, so I have everything color coordinated based on which part of the project it is. And so I started writing down the to do's in the co coordinating corresponding color and I was getting a lot done, but then I hit the 19th and just getting ready for the conference and several other things and publish and thrive. And I just didn't work on this project at all anymore. So some of this stuff that I had set up in the Gantt chart that was supposed to be done before March 10th, March 15th, just didn't fully get done yet. And I mean, we're not there yet, so maybe I'll still get my final edits done, but I think some of this stuff gets pushed back. So I probably will turn the page and set up a new set of Gantt chart stuff for the month of March. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to use it or not, but that's what I'm gonna do. And then most of the rest of this, I haven't really used yet. So that's how that one's going. The only other big notebook that I'm using is still the Erin Condren monthly planner that I started using last year. Uh, for my editorial calendar. So I just continue to fill that out with my ideas for YouTube and to uh, put my, this one is not, you know, I don't keep this one pretty. It's just scribbling of basically outlining my videos that are upcoming. I'm really excited for some of the stuff that's coming up. So I hope you guys are subscribed. Come hang out. <laughs> okay. So future of publishing 
mastermind they gave us in our swag bags we got a really cool yeti cup that said future of publishing and then we got this notebook that says i helped shape the future of publishing and it is refillable and russell told me he was like i don't know the paper quality so i was thinking sarah's gonna want a nice notebook in there so monica was like let's make sure it's refillable <laughs> i'll have to show you the pen in the vlog that i do because the pen is also very nice but i can pull this notebook out of here so I have other A5 notebooks that are like Kiki K and Erin Condren and Stalogy and other things that are, ooh, I should look at getting maybe a Sterling Ink A5 to go in here. Uh, I'm grateful for it. So this is very cool. And I love that I get to now use this forever. And that is basically the notebooks. I have a couple of notebooks to give away as always. And then also I'm going to share with you some books from a diverse author, Mallory Cooper. I ended up spending more time with her probably at Future Publishing Mastermind than anyone else. And I knew from meeting her online and met her at Nink once previously that we would really get along because we're both like computer nerds and um, we just ended up having a lot more in common than I realized. So I thought, oh my gosh, I have to feature Mallory on our diverse reads for the month. So let me introduce you to Mallory Cooper, who writes as M.D. Cooper. And then we're going to talk about our giveaways for the month. Yay, I'm so excited to introduce you to M.D. Cooper, also known as Mallory Cooper. Although I bet a lot of you watching this already are familiar with Mallory because she not only writes science fiction and has this massive universe called Aeon 14 that is best -selling selling, but also she works with her wife, Jill Cooper, and they are known as the writing wives. And they of course help a lot of authors with their Facebook ads and learning all about ads management and blurb writing and lots of other skills for authors. So definitely we'll link for you down below both Mallory's work as well as her work with Jill, who uh, is also just amazing. And I can't wait to meet her in person. We've known each other online for years, but it wasn't until this conference that I feel like my true friendship with Mallory is just solidified. I love her. Cannot wait to hang out with her more. And I'm so excited to get to meet their daughter and to get to hang out with Jill in the future as well. So if you want to check out the books, head to aeon14.com. There is this huge universe. Mallory has written over 150 books and there's a master book list, audiobooks, and there's a uh, list here or a quiz that you can take to find out where to start because there's lots of different series that are all interconnected in the same world. It's like kind of imagine the Marvel universe, right? But we have this science fiction universe that Mallory's created. And I believe there's other authors that write in this universe as well. It's just incredible what they've accomplished. And a little bit more about Mallory. Mallory Cooper likes to think of herself as a dreamer and a wanderer, yet her feet are firmly grounded in reality. A maker from an early age, Mallory loves to craft things like furniture, cosplay costumes to a well-spun tale. She can't help but to create new things every day. A rare extrovert writer, same as me. <laughs> she loves to hang out with readers and people in general. If you meet her at a convention, she just might be rocking a cat suit cosplaying one of her own characters or maybe her latest favorite from Overwatch. She shares her home with a brilliant young girl, her wonderful wife who also writes, a cat that chirps at birds, a never ending list of things she would like to build and ideas. So find out what she's working on at aon14.com or follow her on Instagram at instagram.com slash Mallory Cooper. And you can also check out Facebook group at groups slash Aeon 14 fans. So I won't give you one specific book to check out from Mallory, but if you want to check out a book for free, you can go to aeon 14com and click on start reading free and download Rika's Mechanized, which is a freebie that you can get for joining the newsletter. And there's also a little bit of a blurb here that you can read. Or if you really want to dive into one of the series, then you can definitely do this little quiz here. You can also head over here and read even more about Mallory over here on the um, website. And of course, check out who else writes in this series. So Mallory, if you end up watching this, I loved meeting you and I cannot wait to see you again. So everybody check out MD Cooper. Two giveaways. So one is this Make the Days Count Erin Condren hardcover. It is something you could use as a gratitude journal, a memory journal, daily progress for your goal setting habits. But it basically has four little sections here for each day and it has all these pages in it. So you could go in, you could track literally anything, health and wellness, um, goals, habits, anything like that. And it does have a ribbon to hold your place and it does have 
like a lot of pages in here. I don't know if it's like 365 pages or what, but I've been holding on to this for a while and I just haven't used it. So I want to send it to a better home, somebody that will use it. The other option, if you're not into something that's pre-formatted like this, is this Nonbull notebook. I got this at Kuno Kuniya bookstore in LA. Um, it's a Japanese bookstore and I got this all the way back in 2018. 2019, January, 2019, I was just only like a month and a half pregnant with Evie and went to a conference in LA and ended up spending so much time in that beautiful bookstore. And the guy recommended to me this Tomo River paper notebook. It was very spendy. It's very nice. And it's like OG Tomo River paper, which you have to really kind of like that thing because it is very thin paper and it is going to ghost. That's why I'm giving you kind of two options. But if you love Tomo River paper and the texture and the way it feels and the way it writes with fountain pens, you will love this notebook. And it just is one of those things of like, I've never used it. I don't ever reach for it, but it's so beautiful. It deserves a lovely home. So it has graph paper inside. Great for plotting, for memory keeping, journaling, any like literally the sky's the limit. It does also have a ribbon in here and it has an elastic band to help you keep it closed. So non bold notebook or Erin Condren notebook, I will choose one winner open internationally. We will choose a winner on Friday and I'll get this sent out to you as soon as possible. So that is our lengthy and fun notebook challenge for the month. I hope you love these longer videos. I'm loving creating them for you. And if you're not subscribed, definitely come subscribe to this channel, join our heart breathings community. And if you have not yet taken my HB 90 course, now is the time to get in. It truly has the ability to transform your productivity. And even if you're not somebody who typically likes Kanban boards or paper planners, there's lots of digital tools that you can use. And everybody who goes through this course comes out saying, I learned so much because it's not a one size fits all program that's like, must do it my way. That's not the kind of teacher I am. I'm very much the teacher who says, here's some guidelines. And then how can we make this work for you and the way that your brain is wired? Because your productivity really depends on what situation you're in and how you think and how you feel motivated. So if you've been looking for a course that can help you become more productive, get more of a handle on your time, become less overwhelmed and really start moving forward in your life. I highly recommend that you check it out. Come join us. Uh, registration will be open until the 17th and we will have two videos this week. So I will either have my vlog up from future publishing or we'll talk about something else, but I will see you all in that next video. All right. All my love. Bye. <laughs>